Paano nga ba mag-simplify ng expressions with zero exponents? Gusto mong malaman? Tara at pag-usapan natin yun dito. Manood, makinig, mag-enjoy at matuto. What's up guys? Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is YouMorePH. Andito na naman ang pabibo ninyong guro na punong-puno ng you more and willing to give you more. Narito ako para tulungan ka na tulungan ang sarili mong matuto sa pamamagitan ng math pinadali, math pinasaya, at math pinaexciting na mathematics lesson. Now, if you find this video helpful, please huwag na huwag mong kakalimutan na mag-subscribe and i-click ang notification bell para updated ka sa mga lessons natin dito sa Umore PH. And also, please help me to share this to your friends, classmates, parents, teachers, students, and to your tita, tito, ati, kuya who needs this lesson as well. And without further ado, let's get to our discussion. Hi everyone! Welcome sa lesson natin ngayong araw. So for today, we're going to discuss about Integral and zero exponent. And yes, this is just part number one. So for this specific topic, uh, we're going to have three parts para dito. So ang part one, so we'll focus on zero exponent. So dito tayo mag-focus muna. Alright. Tapos yung second part, integral naman yung positive integral exponent. And for part number two, yung negative integral exponent. So let me give you a background muna about integral exponent. Kapag sinabi integral exponent, ito yung mga exponent na integers. Yan, yung mga expressions na merong exponent na integers. Yung 2 is an integer. Diba? Exponent yan. Y raised to 7, integer. Y raised to negative 7, integer. So kapag yung exponent ay integer, tinatawag siyang integral or expressions with integral exponent. Alright? Kapag 0 naman, obviously, of course, x raised to 0, yung mga exponent niya ay nakaraise sa 0 y raised to 0, 2 raised to 0. Ayan. So, ito naman ang mga uh, expressions na merong 0 exponent. Ayan. So, again, this time we're going to focus on the expressions na merong 0 exponent. Tapos, for part number 2, abangan ninyo, uh, doon we're going to discuss yung positive integral exponents naman. Then, for part number 3, yung mga negative naman. How do you deal with negative exponents? Right? So, let's start our discussion. So, for our examples, we are going to solve 6, ayan, from letter A to letter F. So, simplify the following expressions. So, simplify natin lahat ito. Okay. So, for this topic pala, so I would ask you to first watch yung lesson natin about loss of exponents. So, I have two lessons about loss of exponents. Separately, Meron doong for multiplication, tapos meron doong for division. So, atong zero exponents ay makita ninyo sa division. So, nandun yan lalabas. So, paano ba nangyayari yung zero exponent? So, nangyayari siya. Ito. So, short background lang tayo. So, a raised to m, tapos a raised to m. So, kapag kasi ganyan, di ba, kapag loss of exponents ang pinag-usapan, minus lang natin yung kanyang uh, exponents. So, magiging siyang a raised to m minus m. So, since pareho silang m, m minus m, when you subtract ng the same number, what would be the result? Magiging siyang 0. Okay. And, when a number, an expression, or anything na nakaraise sa 0, the answer is 1. Always 1. And then, yan. Any number raised to 0 and expressions raised to 0, the answer is always 1. So, ito yung loss of exponents na dapat alam ninyo. Okay? So, background lang ito. If you want to know the full detail of this, so, dun sa topic natin about loss of exponents, so, panoorin nyo yun. So, nag-practice tayo doon kung paano mag-solve ng mga ganyang problem. So, this makes sense. Bakit siya naging 1? Kasi we are dividing the same. ba? Ang fraction kasi the same, I mean, division yan eh, ba? A raised to m, divide A raised to m, the answer is 1. So, check this out. Tignan nyo. 1 divide 1. The answer is 1. 2 divide 2. The answer is 1. 3 divide 3. 
the answer is 1. 1,000 divided by 1,000, the answer is 1. So when you divide the same, the answer would be 1 as always. Okay, lagi siyang 1. So kaya, atong last of exponents na to, 1 talaga kapag yung exponent niya ay 0 na. Alright? So focus tayo dito. So kagaya ng sinabi ko kanina, any expression or variable na nakaray sa 0, the answer is 1. So what do you think would be the answer for this one? Exactly. That is 1. As simple as that. So since yung x nakaray sa 0, so therefore, ang value nito ngayon ay 1. Alright, I repeat. Kapag nakakita ka ng expression or variable or number na nakaray sa 0, ang sagot niyan automatic ay 1. But you have to be careful as well. Kasi you have to always ask yourself, ano ba yung nakaray sa 0? So dapat sure ka. Anong expression yung nakaray lang sa 0? Kasi you can't apply that dun sa iba pang mga term. Alright? So that's for number or letter A. Ganun lang. X raised to 0 is equal to 1. So let's move to letter B. Ayan, 15x raised to 0. So the first thing you have to do here is to ask yourself, tanong sa sarili muna, ano ba yung nakaris sa 0? Diba? You have to be sure for that. Dapat alam mo yun. Ano ang nakaris sa 0? That's only x. Diba? Wala namang exponent yung 15. Hindi siya nakaris sa 0. So therefore, yung 15 ay hindi mo gagalawin. Ang magiging 1 lang dyan, tandaan, kapag nakaris 0, magiging 1. So, therefore, ito ay magiging 1. At ang x raised to 0, magiging siyang 1. But we all know, diba, 15 x raised to 0, kinopya ko muna. We all know na kapag term siya, ibig sabihin, nakamultiply yung dalawa. 15 times x raised to 0. So, chichange ko itong muna sa 1. So, magiging siyang 15. Lagi ko sa parenthesis because that's multiplication times 1. So, naging 1 yung x raised to 0. Kasi nga, any number, any expression, any variable na nakari sa 0, the answer is 1. And kaya siya nakamultiply kasi ang term, that is multiplication automatically. Alright? So, para ilagay ng multiplication siya, nilagay ko siya sa parenthesis. Pero there are other notations. So, pwede mo siyang lagyan ng tuldo. Kunwari, 15 times 1. Pwede yan. Pero we are not using anymore yung x. Kasi nga, it would create confusion. Kasi nga, ito ay variable na natin dinitignan. Okay? So, pwede yung tuldok. Pero, ang commonly na ginagamit ay nakaparenthesis. So, times mo lang. 15 times 1, the answer is 15. So, therefore, for letter B, ang 15x raised to 0 is just 15. Ayan. So, di ba kaya nga sinabi ko sa inyo kanina, you have to make sure, dapat sure na sure ka kung ano yung nakaray sa 0. So, in this case, x lang. Let's proceed to letter C. Ayan, in-enclose na siya sa parenthesis. So therefore, ang nakarace ngayon sa 0, kasi dapat sure tayo eh, ang nakarace ngayon sa 0 ay yung buo. Yung buong 15x. Okay, kasi nga, buo niyang uh, nakapasok, eto sa parenthesis lahat, tapos nakarace siya sa 0. So ibig sabihin nito, etong buong given sa atin ay nakarace sa 0. So kapag nakarace sa 0 ang expression or term, 1 lang yung sagot. Okay? As simple as that. This is just 1. Okay? So, ganun lang siya. So, since buong-buo siya nakaraise sa 0, kahit ano pang nasa loob, magigiyang 1. So, the answer for letter C is 1. So, sana nagigets. Iba ito dun sa kanina sa letter B. 15x raised to 0. So, dito kasi, x lang yung nakaraise sa 0. Hindi kasama yung 15. Okay? So, sana nagigets yan. So, let's proceed to letter B. Ito. Paano yan? Nakamultiply ito ha. X raised to 0 plus 7 multiplied by X plus 12 raised to 0. So, ito muna. Focus ka muna dito. Mamaya na yun. So, copyin ko muna siya sa baba. Plus 7 multiplied by X plus 12 tapos overall na nakaring sa 0. So, yung X nakaring sa 0. Sure naman tayo dyan, di ba? So, the answer there Simplify mo muna, magiging siyang 1. Tama? Magiging 1 plus 7. Siyempre yung 7, kukopyahin mo lang. Kasi hindi naman siya nagalang. Again, kaya naging 1 plus 7 siya. Kasi ngayon x raised to 0 ay magiging 1. According to loss of exponent. Diba? 
any number, any variable, any term, and expression raised to zero, the answer is always 1. Okay? Next, ito naman ang pag-usapan natin. Ito. Alright. Ano ba ang nakaraise sa zero? 12 lang ba? Hindi. X lang ba? Hindi. O yung buong x plus 12? Yes. Buong x plus 12 ang nakaraise sa zero. So, kapag nakaraise sa zero, yung buong yan, ibig sabihin 1 lang yan. 1 lang ito. Diba? Ganun lang siya. At ay expression, pero nakaraise sa zero, 1 yan automatically. Tapos, solve mo na lang itong nakuha mo dito. Diba? Solve na lang natin yan. 1 plus 7, that is 8. Tapos, may 1 pa doon, times 1. Ano lang 8 times 1? 8. That's the final answer. So, therefore, ito, when you simplify, kita ka ng mga 0, 0 dyan, simplify mo lang, the answer would be positive 8. Okay, so that's for letter D. So, last two examples tayo. Let's have letter E. Ah, ito. So, bago mag-solve ha, kasi nakita natin na may mga 0 na yung exponent niya. Bago mag-solve, you have to make sure muna na um, kung alin talaga ang nakarig sa 0. So, dito muna tayo. Kopyahin ko muna siya. 23a raised to 0 plus 23a. Then, all over, all yan, nakarig sa 0. Ano ba ang nakarig sa 0 sa una? That's only a. So, therefore, kung a lang ang nakarig sa 0, a lang ang magbabago. So, and we know na ito dapat ay nakamultiply. Kapag magkadikit yung dalawa, nakatimes yan. So, we have 23 times 1. Kasi nga ito ay magiging 1 na. Okay? So, yung 23 dito, ilagay ko sa parenthesis para malaman na multiplication siya. Then, times 1, kasi ito ay nakarisa 0. Plus, ano ang 23? A, tapos may 0 sa taas. So, you have to ask yourself, ano ba ang nakarisa 0? Sir, yung buo. Kung buo yan, kung buo yan na nakarisa 0, that's 1. Okay? That's automatic. Magiging siyang positive 1. Kasi nakarisa siya sa 0 eh. Anything na nakarisa 0 is 1. Now, 23 times 1. Multiplication ito. That's 23. Tapos yung plus 1, bring down mo muna. What is 23 plus 1? That's 24. And that is now the final answer. Okay? O, ba Madali lang. Basta, wag ka lang malilito kung ano ba talaga ang nakarig sa zero. Handaan nyo yun, ha? Anything. Kahit pa yung ganito. X plus Y plus Z plus W plus A plus B plus Y plus 2 plus 5. Tapos, na-raise nyo yan sa zero. Wag mo nang pansinin yan. The answer is 1. Kunwari, ganito kataas yung number. Hindi mo na mabilang kung ilang zero. Pero ni sa 0, that's 1. Okay? Huwag mo nang isipin, that's automatic 1. So, kaya ito, nagigay siyang 1. Okay? So, that's it. Handaan, loss of exponent, any number raised 0 is 1. Last one. 18b, multiplied by a minus c, tapos raised to 0, all over 6b raised to 0. So, ito division naman ito. Pero, solve muna natin. Yung numerator sa denominator. So, we have 18b, a minus c, raised to 0, tapos 6b raised to 0. So, yung mga may raised to 0 muna ang pakaalaman natin. So, since ito ay buong nakaraise sa 0, magiging 1 na yan. So, magiging siyang 18b, 18b times 1. Ito magiging 1. Same as this one, ito magiging 1 din. Yung bilang naman yung nakaraise. So, yung 6, nandiyan pa din, times 1. Okay? Bilang kasi yung naka-raise sa 0. So, magigitong 18b na lang, di ba? When you multiply 1 sa 18b, 18b pa din. 6 times 1 is 6. Tapos, i-divide natin yung 18 sa 6. Okay? So, 18 divided by 6, 3. So, kapag 3 ang sagot, ayan, dito mo siya ilalagay, 3. Tapos, yung b ay wala namang kapartner sa ilalim, kaya kopyahin mo lang siya. So, 18 divided 6 is 3. Tapos, yung B, kopyahin mo lang. Alright? And this is now the final answer. Okay? So, common mistake dito minsan, kunwari, kapag nakita nila, kunwari, 6 over 18, tapos yung B ay nandito din, binalated ko lang yung number. Ang akala ng iba, kapag ang 6 divided sa 18, 3 pa din. That's incorrect. So, since, mas, um, kumbaga, 
hindi mo kayang i-divide yung 6 sa 18. Kasi nga, you will not get um, integer na sagot. So dito, 18 divided 6 is 3. Tama naman. Pero ang 6 divided 18, ang 6 hatiin mo sa 18, bababa siya ng bababa. Diliit siya ng liliit. So kapag ganito yung case, ginagawa siyang fraction. Fraction form. Ilalawis term mo lang. So divide this by 6, that is 1. Divide this by 6, that is 3. Tapos may hindi pa siya taas. So this will become b over 3. Ayan, or 1 third b. So this is now the final answer. Kapag ganito yung given sa atin. So in-emphasize ko lang ito para alam ninyo kung kailan siya magiging fraction. Kasi ito yung common mistake kasi. Kapag ganito, 6 divided 18, akala nila 3 na lang. Nakalimutan na ay fraction form pala dapat. So ang ginawa natin dito is, nilowest term natin ito. So dinibide natin ito sa GCF. Dinibide ito sa 6. Dinibide ito sa 6. Kasi pareho silang divisible by 6. Nagi siyang 1, nagi siyang 3. Okay? Alright. So that's for our examples A to letter F. Now, so di ba madali lang? So I'll give you naman time to answer the following. So, I'll give you three items to answer. Simplify the following expression. So, given tayo ng mga um, exponents na zero. Okay? So, I'll pause for a while now and I'll get back to you to give the answer. But if you still need time, feel free to pause the video. Your timer starts now. Alright, time's up. So, let's answer letter A. Ayan. So, isa-isahin natin. So, we have 8y, tapos nakaray sa 0, plus 9. Yung y nakaray sa 0, plus 38. So, eto, since buo siyang nakaray sa 0, that's 1. Diba? Plus, eto nakatimes itong dalawa, di ba? So, since magiging 1 yung y raised to 0, kasi siya lang naman yung nakaray sa 0, Magiging siyang 9, so parenthesis ko muna yung 9 kasi naka-times yan sa 1. 9 times 1 plus 38. So wala namang kinalaman yung 38, kaya copyin mo lang siya. Solve mo. Ulitin ko ha, eto. Eto ay magiging 1 kasi nga buo siya na naka sa 0. Then this one, kaya siya naging 9 times 1 kasi nga yung y lang naman na naka sa 0. And we all know na ito ay naka-multiply. So 9 times 1, 38, walang kinalaman dyan. So copy so, bring down 1. 9 times 1 is 9 plus 38. Plus mo lang. 1 plus 9, 10. Plus 38, 48. So, this is now the final answer. Congrats sa nakakuha ng tamang sagot for number 1. So, let's have letter B. Ayan. So, 3 multiplied by the quantity of x minus y raised to 0 plus the quantity of z raised to 0 plus 4. Alright, so kopyahin ko muna. xy raised to 0 plus z squared, ay, z raised to 0 plus 4. So, eto, since naka raised to 0 siya, magiging 1. Eh, may 3 pa sa labas. So, yung 3 nakamultiply din. Okay, so magiging ganito siya. So, yung 3, kinopya ko. Tapos, eto, naging 1. Plus, na, nakatimes kasi ito eh, nakamultiply siya. Kaya, 3 times 1 siya. Next. So, yung plus, kopyahin, huwag kakalimutan. Ang 0 raised to 0, siya lang naman yung naka-raise sa 0. Magiging siyang 1 plus 4. Solve natin. Yung 4, kinopya ko lang kasi nga, hindi naman siya naka sa 0. Wala siyang ginalaman. So, kopyahin mo lang. 3 times 1 is 3. Plus, ano ang 1 plus 4? That's 5. Okay? 3 plus 5, that is 8. And this is now the final answer. Okay? So, yun lang. Ganyan for letter B. Congrats sa mga nakatama for letter B. So, let's see for letter C. 4M raised to 0, P over 28M and raised to 0. So, kapiyan ko muna. Over 28M and raised to 0. So, yung mga nakaraise to 0 muna, galawin natin. So, magiging itong 4 times 1 
Kaya magiging 1 kasi yung m, di ba? m raised to 0. Times p. Kasi yung p hindi naman siya nakalagay sa 0, kakopihin ko siya. Next ito, 28 times m. Okay? Kasi yung m ay hindi naman nakalagay sa 0, so kopyahin mo siya. Ay yung n nakalagay sa 0. So, mangyayari, yung n, I mean, sorry, yung n magiging 1. Di ba? So, kasi nakalagay siya sa 0, kaya siya naging 1. Times mo lang to. 4 times 1, 4. Times p, 4p. Hindi mo kasi yan pwedeng ipagsama eh. Kaya, 4p lang yan. 28 times m, 28m. Times 1, 28m pa din. Okay? P and m, hindi niya yan pwedeng masimplify. So, therefore, sasagot may p sa km talaga, sa taas, sa kasababa. Pero yung 4 sa ka-28, kaya pa siyang i-lowest term. Okay? Yung term ka i-lowest term. Bakit? Maybe, eto kasi yung sinasabi ko sa inyong common mistake. Feeling nila ang 4 divided by 28 ay 7. That's incorrect. Ang 4 hatiin mo sa 28, do you think magiging 7 yan? Hindi. Tama yan kung 28 divided 4. Ang 28 hatiin mo sa tag-aapat. The answer is 7. So, eto ay ba? Kapag nalitad mo yan, of course, iba rin yung magiging sagot. Okay, so since you are dealing with this problem, 4 divided by 28, so ilowest term na lang natin kasi nga hindi siya, hindi niya kayang i-divide ng 28 yung 4 dito na mapapalabas natin ay integer or whole number. Okay, so ang mangyari dyan, oh, sige, separate ko muna yung 4 over 28. Ito lang, ito yung dalawang yan ha. So maybe kasi, uh, may mga student na hindi agad naiisip kung ano yung GCF. So, iisa-isahin natin. Kakonti-konti lang muna. Ano yung una mong maiisip kapag nakita mo yung 4 sa ka-28 na i-divide na sa kanila? That's 2. Pakonti-konti lang muna. That's 2. Alam mo na divisible yung pareha sa 2. 4 divided 2 is 2. 28 divided 2 is 14. Tapos, nakita mo ulit, ay sir, divisible pa rin siya sa 2. Divide mo ulit. Divide mo ulit sa 2. Pareho. So, 2 divided 2, the answer is 1. 14 divided 2, the answer is 7. Meron pa ba? Wala na, kasi prime na yung 7, saka yung 1. So, pwede naman 1, kaya lang hindi na siya ginagamit. It will not, uh, you will not end your solution kapag dinivide mo pa yun sa 1. So, 1 over 7. So, ibig sabihin, yung lowest term ng, 1, ng 4 over 28 is 1 over 7. Pero yung P, saka yung N, andun pa din. Alright, so pwede na tong final answer, pero usually kasi, di ba? kapag 1 na yung katabi ng variable, tinatanggal na natin. I-or ko na lang. Or, P over 7N. So, ito yung sagot for letter C. So, sana nag-guess ninyo yung paglulowest term natin, kasi that's very important. So, actually, pwede mo yung i-direct yung divide by 4, kung alam mo na yung GCF. Okay, divide by 4, divide by 4. So, ayan, GCF kasi yung 4. We have 1 and 7. Pwede naman yun. Pero kung um, hindi mo naiisip agad yung GCF, magkonti-konti ka. Okay yun. Lalabas pa rin naman, di ba? Anyway, lalabas pa rin naman yung tamang sagot, which is 1 over 7. So, again, if your answer is 1P over 7N, correct yan. Or P over 7N, correct pa din. Okay? So, mention your scores in our comment section and let me congratulate you. Okay? So thank you so much for watching. I hope you've learned a lot today. And I want to see you in our next video. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you've learned and enjoyed our lesson for today. And if you did, please wag na wag mong kakalimutan na mag-subscribe and i-click on notification bell. And also, don't forget that you deserve more. You can learn more. And you can be more. Hashtag, you more PH. Bye-bye! See you in our next video.